I wrote a letter today to DHS because under Iowa's contract with Amerigroup and with United, the state auditor has a role for reviewing and testing compliance with the contracts. And I've identified instances where I think both MCOs have failed to comply with their legal obligations to the state of Iowa. And they failed to comply in a way that is both bad for the individuals uh, that we're talking about in these cases, but also bad for taxpayers in general. So there's two quadriplegics in Iowa who received notice from their provider that their provider was going to cease providing services. They got a 30-day notice. And I was contacted during that 30-day window, and I decided that this would be a good opportunity uh, for me to see what I could see and see what I can learn and see if I could help. What I saw in those 30 days was a total lack of action on the MCO's part and that really the situation for these individuals would be far worse uh, if these individuals weren't essentially doing what the MCOs are being paid to do. Uh, these people have experienced cuts in their care, they've experienced cuts in their services, they've had a service gap, both of which uh, should not happen. Uh, that is an instance of non-compliance. And the MCOs had plenty of time to address these issues and for whatever reason have failed to do so. There are other cases that I've looked at where I've sort of tested it for compliance with the contract. And although it's undeniable the person has experienced difficulties, I've seen situations where I haven't identified a failure to comply, where what happened was unfortunate and yet at the same time, in my role, I can't say that it was a failure of compliance. We are talking about the absolute bottom line, right? Are taxpayers in Iowa getting what they paid for when they signed these contracts with these MCOs? What these ex people experienced was MCOs pushing them towards nursing homes, which in their circumstances is actually more expensive for taxpayers and they don't want to live in a nursing home. They want to live in their own home. And so it's bad for these individuals and it's bad for taxpayers in general. I wanted to bring this up now because these people's situations have not been resolved. There's hints of resolution, there's ideas that it might be moving in the right direction, but they are still experiencing cuts in care and still at any day might throw their hands up and say, fine, I give up, I'm going into a nursing home, which is bad for them and bad for taxpayers. I don't give out deadlines on things because I want to know that I am doing my job thoroughly. However, at the same time, I can tell you that we will have uh, probably multiple Medicaid audits that are issued in advance of the 2020 elections.